Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode two of Questions and Answers. In this episode, I'm going to answer one Photoshop question, one question about an operating system, and three questions about Lightroom. Before I do that, just let me say thank you very much to everyone that has made donations or used my affiliate links or has purchased my Lightroom presets and or Photoshop actions. Because of you, I was able to purchase a Rode microphone. Now I mentioned in the past that I want to do a lot more videos from my studio and that Rode microphone is really going to help me make professional quality audio in those videos that I do in the studio. Next, I'm going to be purchase, purchasing a stabilization gimbal. I mentioned again that I'd like to do videos out in the field demonstrating some photographic techniques, maybe landscape photography, stuff like that. And that stabilization gimbal, once I get it, will really help me make professional quality videos with um, really smooth you know, video without herky-jerkiness and very amateurist look to it. So thank you everyone that has helped me out. If you're interested in helping me make the best free photography how-to videos possible, please look in the right-hand corner, top right-hand corner of your screen. You'll see there's an I. Click on that I and you'll get some info on how you could help me out. All right, the first question is the Photoshop question and it's from Bill and I actually received this question from more than one person. In episode five of your new Photoshop series, you selected the background behind a bird and hit the delete key to remove it. When I do that, I get a fill dialog box appearing on the screen. All right, what Bill and the others are referring to is I had this exact image of this bird in that video and I selected the background exactly how it's selected here. And once I did that, all I hit was the delete key and the background disappeared. What they're saying is when they hit the delete key, they're getting this fill dialog box and the background is not going anywhere. So why is that? Well, what I should have been more clear in the video is there's different kinds of layers. We know that there's adjustment layers and there's, you know, all these different kinds of layers. Well, this layer is a background layer and you can see it says background and it has a little padlock. In the video, I wasn't working on a background layer. I was just working on a normal layer. So for you, if you're working on a background layer and you do something like this, Photoshop won't let you delete the pixels because some things with a background are like forbidden. So when you hit the delete key, you'll just get this fill dialog box. So what you need to do is if you're working on the background layer and you want to delete pixels of a selection is you must make it a normal layer. And to do that, simply click on the padlock and now it's a normal layer. Now, when you hit the delete key, you'll delete whatever you had selected. In this case, it was the background. So I'm sorry I wasn't more clear about that in that video, but that's how it's done. It's very easily done. Now, the next question is a Lightroom question. This is from Ron. He says, when I use a brush with color, how do I reset the color without changing the sliders? Hitting reset resets the sliders and the color. Okay, what I think Ron is referring to, when he has a brush and he has his sliders pushed all over the place, and then he gets a color, and you get any color, it doesn't matter. And you make, let's say, a brush stroke, okay, with that color, although it's not really showing that color very well, but you get the idea. Now let's say, excuse me, Ron wants to get a new brush, so he's double, gonna double click on new, and he wants to reset just the color back to neutral, not to a different color. It's easy to get a different color, right? You could just click on a different color. But he wants to reset it back to neutral. And what he's talking about is if he resets the brush, it resets everything. And he doesn't want to reset the sliders. And just for those of you that don't know, if you want to reset the brush, you could double click on the word effect, or you could hold the alter option key in. Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac, and you can see it turns into Reset. And when you do that, it's resetting everything, the sliders and the color swatch. So what? how do you reset the color swatch back to a neutral color? So we have our, new, our brush here, and it has a color. We did a brush stroke. We're done with it. We just want to reset that color to neutral. To do that, click on the swatch this little slider, move it all the way to the left. 
just like that. That's all you have to do. And now you can see we're back to neutral with the color and we could add more brush strokes if we so choose. So that's how you do that. The next question is a Lightroom question. It's from Sandy and she says, when I import images, my screen looks nothing like yours. Mine is smaller and doesn't have most of the things your screen has on it. I get this question quite often. Now, the keyboard shortcut for importing is shift command I if you have a Mac, shift control I if you have a PC, and you'll get the import dialog. And I do this a lot in a lot of different videos, and you'll see my import dialog looks like this. It takes up the entire screen, uh, source on the left, and all these different options on the right, and how you're going to handle the fi files and where you're going to put them. What Sandy is saying is that hers looks like this. And if you noticed what I did, there's this little triangle right here. And if you click on it, you could get either the verbose screen. That's what I call it. I don't know what. <laughs> I just made that up on right now. So, uh, so you get this big screen. And if you go down here in the lower left-hand corner and you click on this triangle again, you'll get the smaller screen. And you can see the smaller screen doesn't have as much info on it. So it's really up to you which one you prefer to use. I prefer to use the larger screen, and that's the default screen. I believe when you just purchase Lightroom, that's what it's going to look like. But perhaps people accidentally hit this expose triangle and they get this screen. Now every time they import images, they will get this smaller screen. So just remember that. Just click on this little square and you'll toggle from the big screen to the little screen. So I hope that made sense. Now, the next question is from Jan. When I use the radial filter, I don't see the oval circle, although I can tell that the filter is working. All right, what Jan is talking about is she gets the radial filter and she just like draws out like that. And you can see now we have the oval because I drew an oval, right? She's not seeing that. Well, if you look down here, this down here is called the toolbar. If you don't see that, hit the T key on your key bar, it, the keyboard. It turns that toolbar on and off. And then if you go on the far left, it says show edit pins. I have auto. And what that means is you could see when I'm off the image, when I have the cursor off the image, you don't see the edit pins. But when I go over the image, we're getting the overlay and the edit pins. That's, that's what happens when it's auto. What's, what's happening for Jan is she has it on never, so you'll never see it. So what you could do, again, access the toolbar and go to this dropdown and choose one of the selections you prefer to use. I prefer to use auto. What happens also is if you hit the H key on your keyboard, H for hide, you'll hide it. If you hit the H key again, it will reappear. So the H key will toggle that on and off. Now that isn't only for the radial filter, it's also for the graduated filter, the spot removal tool, and actually for the brush too. You could turn off those uh, edit pins with the brush as well. So that is why Jan isn't seeing the circle. And I get that question actually now and then. Just hit the H key is the easy way to answer it, and you could turn that on and off. All right, the last question is kind of an operating system question. Specifically, it's about the Mac magic mouse or the Apple magic mouse and I actually I get this question a lot I'm surprised actually how much I get this question um, often in your videos this is from Mark you say to right click on something I have an iMac and I cannot right click on anything what do Mac users do and what Mark's referring to with the magic mouse there's no buttons on it at all it's like a touch mouse and it it will click when you press it but it really is a single button mouse out of the box. Well, if you look at your keyboard, you'll notice there's a control key on your keyboard. And that's kind of odd for Mac because we never use the control key for anything. Uh, whereas with a Windows machine, you're hitting control A or control V or you're using the control key for a lot of different functions. Whenever we have the equivalent function on a Mac, instead of hitting control, we hit command. So if we want to select everything on a Mac, we'd hit Command A instead of Control A on a PC and stuff like that. Well, that Control key is kind of your right-click key. Hold the Control key in, then click down on the mouse. Now let's say I want to change the background here, the color of the background. 
Uh, normally I would say right click. Well, hold the control key in and just single click with your Mac or your Apple Magic Mouse and it's the same as right clicking. So just do that and that's how you right click. Now, just so you might know, is there is a, an option in System Preferences if you go to your mouse and right here, Secondary Click. See how mine is turned on? That means, see how in this uh, little video down here, the finger is on the right hand side? That's making a right click, basically. And actually, the mouse will recognize both your index finger and your middle finger. And the middle finger is like a right click. So the, actually, you could make your Apple Magic Mouse behave exactly like a PC mouse by just clicking this box in System Preferences. And that's the way I have mine set up. So whenever I'm in Lightroom, if I want to right click, I just right click with my middle finger. It's on the right side of the mouse. And if I want to left click, I just left click with my normal index finger on the left side of the mouse. So set your mouse up that way. That's what I recommend. If you don't want to do that, hold the control key in when you click and that's this, that will create a right click. So that's it for this episode of questions and answers. Thank you everyone that sends me in some questions. I do appreciate it. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I really, really do appreciate that. I'll talk to you guys soon.